Hello tribe, welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing a mysterious reading and I'm doing it slightly differently from what you're used to. Today I don't have any cards in front of me. I decided to sit back and relax and allow any visions to come through. And a lot of those may be metaphorical, but if you are self-reflective, you will know what this ties into. And hopefully this reading will make sense. If there will be any visions that are super vivid and if I'll find a video or an image that's going to be close to what I'm seeing, I will include it in this video. So pile number one, two and three. Choose your number and I will see you in timestamps. Hello group number one. So let me tap in and let me see what I'm picking up for you for your mysterious reading. I love these readings because there is no topic and anything that might come through might be important to you on spiritual level or on physical. Let's see. I'm seeing a dagger and I'm seeing a child. So let me try and make sense of this. Let me tap into my feelings. Either this is your own childhood or if you have a child, this may be representing their energy. I'm being shown a person who is very, very young, and they had to pick up a dagger as a symbol of self-protection very early on. Almost as if this child expects danger to appear at any point in time, and they have to be ready at all times. This may be referring to some of your childhood, or maybe referring to someone's character or someone's issues that they may have right now I'm hearing uncontrollable so some of you may have anxiety or depression or you are jumpy or you have a tick this may tie back into the time or times where you had to protect yourself this would be someone who grew up in the family uh, where there was a lot of shouting or if a child felt unsafe in any way. They lacked protection from the other. And for some of you, this could tie into one of the past lives um, that is still unsolved in some way for you. And you, you sometimes feel that way even if you had a good childhood. And you're like, where am I getting this from? Why am I jumpy? Why this is happening? Some of you may have had an accident in this or the past life. Um, there is um, a sense of PTSD here in pile number one. Let's see what, what the advice is or anything else that comes through. Wow, I don't know why this came through so strongly, but um, I don't know if you're single or if you're in partnership. Regardless, what I'm picking up, I'm hearing in this lifetime, you're supposed to find a partner who makes you feel safe and secure. It's part of your contract that you have pre-written for yourself, pre-incarnation. Yes, I'm going to have that difficult experience, but that's going to push me towards a path of searching for inner peace. First, within myself, how can I sort it out myself? And then I will make a decision to find a partner who's calm and who's grounding. Throughout my journey, I might meet or might have met partners who also make me feel that I'm constantly on the edge or unsafe. And those will be my experiences. Until one day, a light bulb moment appears and I will understand exactly what I need to do and what to seek for. Calm and grounding relationship is the way to go. Yes, sometimes danger is exciting, but that's not what I need. I need a good, calming partner. Sometimes I may have doubts in my mind because that partner may not make me feel as excited as a more unstable or in and out type of partner because that's, that's how I understand love, right? 
I relate to love in that way. It's unstable. And there's going to be a day where I'll go to a therapist or I'll do hardcore self-reflection and I'll realize that I need to change my narrative, change my perspective and to start looking for or inviting partners who are grounding. And the best way for me to do so is to first create some of that peace within me so that this energy resonates with whoever I'm trying to invite into my life. Yes, I realize that relationship is a not um, smooth road. There can be ups and downs. But the most important thing, when I will be writing down in my diary my intentions or description of what kind of partner I want and I need in this life, one of the things will mention peace or a sense of security. Most importantly, emotional. Let me come back to this uh, vision that I had of a child. Not only this child protects themselves very much, but tends to protect other people. Tends to protect other people so much that they're in constant mode of, I need to care for everyone. Because that's something that they haven't received themselves. And the more they care for everyone else, the more they forget themselves. And it's a cycle. So in this lifetime, I'm hearing I'm going to end the cycle. I'll be in it for a while until I realize what I need to realize. But the moment I end that cycle and I realize that I need to prioritize self first and sort out my own shite, <laughs> it's going to be an eye-opening, a breakthrough. An eye-opening moment and a breakthrough. And from then on, now I'm seeing flowers and I can smell the field. From then on, I will be free. I'm also hearing I will have a couple of friends. I won't have too many, two very close friends. Those friends will be like my family. I don't need too many people around me. I need a couple of people who understand me deeply. And I will have tea with them. I will spend time with them. I will talk to them about my journey as well as theirs. I'm seeing now you having a picnic in that beautiful field with a couple of people that you dearly love and you consider them your family, your soul family. And now I'm seeing that they throw you a really beautiful celebration it's your birthday i'm picking up it's your birthday and they surprise you with a beautiful setup and in that moment you are very grateful and that's that's all that you need emotionally it feels like that's all that you need as long as as i have these kind of people around me that's all that i need that's where my peace lies. And now I'm seeing your partner walking in. Would it be your existing or future partner? And this partner is carrying a stone. And that stone is a representation of grounding. And it's as if they're saying it's up to you how you look at that stone. Either you're going to think that it's heavy and I don't need it, or you're going to look at it as an anchor, as a grounding tool, as something that was formed throughout the years. It has energy of the earth. It has history in it. And it's able to make you feel present. So this partner is, is bringing in it's like I want to breathe in and breathe out immense peace they're saying I will 
I will trigger you at some point because I will tell you if you are doing something that's wrong. So I promise to you to be truthful. Not offensive truths I'm hearing, but honest, loving truths you can expect from me. And that's the only way for both of us to grow. So expect, I expect that you will do the same for me. As long as we are vulnerable, we can overcome any storms in a sea. I hope this made sense, pile number one. That was a very interesting one. And if you like that type of reading, let me know. I love doing these. I will catch you in the next one. By the way, if you need more content, find me on Patreon. All links are down below. Bye. Hey, group number two. Let's see what I'm picking up for you. What came through um, very strongly is a father. Let me see what this is trying to tell me. I'm hearing it is very important to have a good father figure in this life. Maybe some of you didn't have that. But I'm hearing it doesn't have to be your own father. As long as in this lifetime you have a good example of a father and you are close to that person. It could be a friend, could be a brother, could be sister's brother, could be a co-worker that you're very close to. As long as you have that, you're going to be able to realize what a true father, real father does. It's a very important job. So for some of you, this might be a mission in this lifetime, right? Like a big lesson. If, for example, when you were growing up, your father wasn't there or you had a very bad relationship, or they were, they neglected you in some way. They were not there. Let's flip the script. Instead of taking that as an example, look at people who have the pure, strong energy of a father don't get me wrong I'm hearing we all make mistakes so none of us are perfect and it's a very important job to be a father but please do not look at a broken father image and choose partners or people who surround you who represent that crack you can change things up by choosing people or listening to other people's stories how a real father acts with their children how caring he is how supportive he is You don't have to use that old print for your future choices. In this lifetime, you realize what the issue was and you realize that you can change that. You can change that energy within yourself by saying, okay, maybe I didn't have a best parent, but it doesn't mean that I cannot find the support that I need or examples that are better around me and I choose to look at them instead of looking back at that broken father image and judging them and coming back to the pain it does nothing good for me I can reflect I can do self-work I can do therapy but I need to set myself free from that and I need to rewrite my programming. And if some of you believe that you cannot find a good 
person. A good father. For most of you, I'm picking up this. This is the pattern that you will be choosing in the future. A good father for your children. You are wrong. Don't think that you won't be able to find a person like that. Let me see what I'm picking up about this person. Eyes. You will be able to recognize this person if you don't know them of them just yet. Just by looking at their eyes. Their eyes will be very bright. Now, it may not be bright for other people looking at their eyes, but it will be for you as if your vision will play a trick on you. It's going to be your, your sign that you will be able to recognize once you look into this person's eyes, into their soul. It will be pure, it will be bright. And you will be very safe with them. At first, it may scare you. At, most, at first, it may make you think that, oh my God, like, are they tricking me? Are they so nice because they are wearing a mask? Because I'm not used to that kind of behavior or I'm not used to um, a man treating children such way. For example, if you're together around other people and they play with other people's kids and you go, mm, that is that is strange. But it might only be strange because you haven't seen that before. And there will be a moment once you get a it's like something's going to click within you. Once you will be watching them do something that requires vulnerability and an open heart. And in that moment, you will see the purity that they hold. And you will know that this is the person you want to choose to walk with. I keep getting, please, no judgment. If you tend to judge that parent... I'm hearing it saying it doesn't help you or them. They make their own choices. You make your own choices. They have their own, own karmic path to walk. You have your own. I'm also hearing we cannot force someone to open their eyes to something that they don't want to see. And it's okay. You can open your own. Wish them well just because uh -huh, okay one second it's not for them it's for you and the more you cling to those bad moments the more weight you are carrying let me see if there is anything else If you have a sibling, that sibling may need your attention or your time, or they may need you check, to check in on them. And even if they're gonna say, I'm fine, very casually, ask them deeper questions. Some of you may need to connect to one of your siblings on a deeper level. Maybe you became disconnected. Maybe life happened. Whatever the case. I'm getting. Please reconnect to them. Let me try and tap in. What is the reason? It's like I'm young. You lost one another. Yeah. Busy. Busyness happened. Or life happened. You're supposed to be closer. If you will see butterflies in the next coming couple of days, know that these are your guides, your guardians, sending you signs. And the meaning of a sign is protection. I see you. I watch you. You are not alone. So I hope that this made sense, plan number two. If you need more content, find me on Patreon. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, pal number three. So let's see what I'm picking up for you. <laughs> okay, first thing that I'm picking up here is food. My attention is being brought to food. 
In this lifetime, you may have issues with either eating disorder, maybe obesity, or your weight fluctuates, or you have very intense allergies. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to tell you why, uh, the reason, what is happening, but I want to understand it a little bit. Intolerance. Intolerance or hormones. Now, I would pay attention those whose hormones are all over the place and it affects your weight and or your sexual life. You need to dive deeper into your throat chakra, organs around that area. Let's say thyroids or your root or cheek or sacral. So I'll leave it up to you to do a bit more investigation. Now for other people, what I'm picking up here, your relationship with food may be affected by your relationship growing up. So some of you maybe are emotionally eating. In order to fill that void or to understand it better, I feel like some sort of therapy would help, even hypno to understand when it started happening. So you may be drawn to any regression, regression work to see what is that void some of you are trying to fill. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be only food. It could be any kind of substance. Overdoing it especially. Too many glasses of wine, too much smoking, too much eating. I'm not picking up that I'm getting people here who suffer from addiction to sex, but it could be. In my vision, I'm seeing a sword. Let me see where this takes me. Mm. And I'm seeing that sword being wrapped up in a cloth and being buried in the ground in a soil but the soil it smells amazing it smells fresh it's very fertile soil what is this trying to tell us okay the moment you bury that sword metaphorically speaking this could be in any situation you will realize a potential of yourself. Some of you have been carrying that sword with you in all ventures of life. A sword could be a representation of repressed emotion, of fear, always being ready to fight. But most importantly is that ceremony of burying that sword knowing that at any point if you will need that you will know where to find it but you don't have to burden yourself carrying it with you everywhere and once you start digging i'm seeing you're finding something treasurable your intention is to bury that sword but the moment you start digging the ground, you're finding some sort of treasure. And you're like, hey, it's a miracle. I didn't even think of that. I didn't think I'd find anything valuable. I just wanted to bury it. But now, look what I found. So this worked out for the best. I'm seeing a small piece of gold that represents something wonderful in your life and i'm seeing you in the market now trading that piece of gold it's very old times i'm being brought to very old times you're carrying that piece of gold and you're trading it for something else what is it
I'm being told that for all of you, what you need in that market is going to be different because I'm seeing five different stalls and I'm not being able to pick up one particular scenario. So we will know yourself, if you close your eyes right now, what you need to trade that gold for. Make sure that you don't sell it for too cheap. In this lifetime, don't sell, your, sell yourself cheap in general. Maybe sometimes you tend to minimize yourself. Okay, that's fine. I'll do it. Boss gives you five times more amount of work. And you go, I'm a good, I'm a good colleague. I'm a good worker. I'll do all of it. Don't. Make sure that you don't allow people to use and abuse you because of your good heart. Know that you are carrying that piece of gold. You have a lot to offer. Not only personally your expertise, but also you have something wonderful in your pocket that some people will never know about. You'll choose who you want to tell about, who you want to tell to what you found in that soil. In this lifetime, you're supposed to be wealthy. Even if you don't believe it, your path has to lead you towards abundance. And there is plenty for everyone. So some of you may have encountered blockages, pitfalls, issues. Maybe when you were growing up, you saw poverty or... Later down in life, you had something happening to you where you have lost maybe money. Either way, those were experiences. It doesn't mean that it has to carry on. You're supposed to climb up that ladder of abundance. Let me try and pick up how can you do so. <laughs> I'm being told, remember that you are gold. This reminds me of a situation where I remember I was in uni. I was studying architecture and we had to present our, our projects to five architects and they would judge us. So you'd pin your work on the wall and you would defend your work, right? And there were people who had great projects. Everything is thought through. A to Z. But because they didn't believe in themselves, they would get so shy or when the question is asked, they would lose themselves. They wouldn't be able to explain it properly. And the more they looked like a scared cat in a corner, the less people believed in their idea. Now, there were people who did that work which required them to do in the past three months. They did it in the past three days. But because they knew that they are carrying that gold in their pocket, they're like, listen, I know that I can defend this work well. If I can speak well, if I'm self-confident, if I bring in that energy, I can do it. Instead of 15 drawings, they'd have five and they would get the best grades. Because of how quickly they were able to defend the work, come up with ideas. And it's because they were not scared. They were not scared. They were self-confident. I'm seeing a tennis, table tennis now. They would shoot that ball back as fast as as they could and those questions were just bouncing off of them they're like okay and those those reviews would take the least time so your reading is saying who you're going to choose to be yes it requires work Self-discipline, reminding yourself of that beautiful stone in your pocket. 
but no one can do it, just you. You will be bringing in that golden energy into the room, if not just yet. And with that energy, abundance comes and it multiplies. And if you believe, there is no end to it. And it feels like you're going to teach the younger ones the same. Would it be your own child? Or would it be younger people that you're working with? You will be teaching them some sort of mentality that took you time, energy and dedication to get to, to really integrate. But you got there and you want to spread it to someone else. So I wouldn't be surprised if you are teachers of any kind. And not direct teachers, doesn't have to be uni teacher, school teacher. Just in general, maybe in your circle, in your group of friends, maybe online. So I hope that this made sense. If you need more content, find me on Patreon and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.